is Richard Ross and I am a servant of the Most High God. Today we will be going through Matthew chapter 10 where Jesus sends out his 12 disciples um, and uh, does a bit of teaching here. If you all don't mind, please let me open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, I glorify you. I lift you over all things. Father, I'm nothing without you, Lord. I pray and ask once again that you will wash me clean in the blood of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, so that I may be acceptable in your sight. Thank you, Lord, for time and time again for cleansing me, Father. I pray and ask that you also fill me with your Holy Spirit, that I may accurately present your word to your sheep, Father. Allow the word to seek seek. Allow the word to seep deep into our hearts, Lord, in our minds, in our bodies, Father. Allow us to be able to access the word in our heart, Lord, and exercise it in our day-to-day -day life, ultimately glorifying your name. Help us to be sure to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, so, in... Matthew chapter 9, um, and, and chapter 8 9 of Matthew, it, it is Jesus' healing ministry, if you will. And uh, at the end of Jesus' healing ministry, which concludes in chapter 9, uh, Jesus sends out, we enter into, into, into to chapter 10, but at the end of chapter 9, Jesus looks out, out at the multitudes and and had compassion on them. It says in chapter 9, verse 36, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. So, since the people were like sheep, having no shepherd, in, in Matthew 10, Jesus goes ahead and sends out his disciples that they may, uh, that they may preach the, uh, 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 the kingdom of heaven to the uh to the scattered sheep if you will all right so we'll just go uh verse by verse here all right and, uh, and remember here this is taking place jesus is still headed towards nazareth so after the sermon on the mount jesus crossed across went across he sailed across the sea of galilee to gargazanese where he healed the demoniac People asked him to leave from there. He sailed, sailed back across the Sea of Galilee um, towards the uh, west. And from when he docked there, he started headed, heading towards Nazareth, which is his own country. All right. And I believe he gets to Nazareth around chapter... I want to say it's around 13 when he gets to uh, Nazareth. Yeah, because, you know, they were they rejected. Yes, and in chapter 13, towards the end, Jesus gets to, actually arrives in Nazareth, and they reject him there when he talks about how a prophet is not uh, without honor. A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. So we're, we're, we're going, for, Jesus is still traveling from the Sea of Galilee towards Na, uh, Nazareth, which is his own country. And that's where this is taking place, somewhere along that path of travel. Okay, opening up in Matthew chapter 10, verse number 1. Please follow along with me if you guys can, if you have a Bible even a, a digital Bible on your phone helps. I want you guys to know that this stuff is coming out of the Bible and I'm not just making this stuff up. I am giving you my interpretation of the scriptures um, as I feel is, is the accurate interpretation. Uh, I'm not going to be 100% accurate. I don't think anybody on the face of the earth will be 100% accurate. The Word of God, it will take multiple lifetimes to actually digest and and, 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 and understand the, the Holy Bible in its entirety. It would take multiple lifetimes. 
So I'm doing the best I can with what I got in these 31 years of life and my experience and, and my sin and my and my repentance and, and through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God, I, I'm doing my best to uh, to, to represent God and interpret his, interpreting his uh, scriptures to those who might not have time to do Bible study on their own. People might not have the capacity to even read, you know, so I would hope that um, um, uh, this will be helpful to any individuals who can use it. And not only for those who cannot read or cannot find the time to interpret the scriptures, but, you know, perhaps even the young believer who might not uh, have interest in the scripture. I hope I can reach those, and not only those, but the seasoned believers um, who may think they have a, may feel they have a, a good grasp of the scriptures. I want to challenge them to, to go deeper, to go deeper, because, I mean, I don't think we can hit the bottom, not in this lifetime, as far as going to the, the depths of the scriptures. The, this is how the Bible is to me in my perception. It's like, it's like the deep, as deep as the deepest part of the ocean floor, okay? So let's say you just so happen to go all the way down to in the ocean and actually were able to, was able to hit the floor, all right? That doesn't mean that you searched out the, the ocean in its entirety. You still have to, you can go left, you can go right, you can go back, you can go forward. I mean, it's it's so much information, it's so much there to be discovered and to be uh, uh, studied in that, okay? And I, I feel that's the same way with the, uh, with the scriptures, okay? So, going into it, Matthew 10, 1. And when he called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And it goes on here in 10, 2 to name all of his disciples, okay? Um, Simon, whose name is Peter, uh, Andrew, uh, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, Labaius, uh, also called Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Okay, so, uh, Matthew 10.5. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not go and do not enter the city of the Samaritans. So the gospel is, is to go first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. Um, um, a Gentile, essentially in layman's terms, is a non-Jew. Okay, who are the Samaritans that he referred to here? It says, "Do not enter the city of the Samaritans." The Samaritans are of some Jewish descent, but they are not. Uh, pure bred Jews, if you will. If I'm not mistaken, they are. Um, they're they have uh, it, they have mixed in with the uh, Philistines. Okay, so they're not like 100% pure pure Jews. So first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. All right, it's how the gospel's supposed to go. So that's what Jesus tells his disciples to do: go first to the Jews. All right. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Jews. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right, time out here. I did this kingdom of heaven description before, but I want to just kind of refresh it, if, if you will. So what is the kingdom of heaven? Jesus told his disciples to go out and preach. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So John the Baptist before Jesus started his ministry, John the Baptist preached out in the wilderness, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Once John was in prison, Jesus came out preaching the same message, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus tells his disciples to go out and preach the same message. It just says here, the kingdom of, of heaven is at hand, but the, the full message is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right, all right. So what is repent? Repent means to acknowledge wrongdoings or sins that, that, that we've committed and, you know, to feel sorrow for having committed sin 
and not only feel sorrow for it, but turn from our sin. And if we were to turn from our sin, that means we would be going towards God. If we were sinning and we were going this way, we would acknowledge our sin, feel sorrow, stop sinning, turn from our sin, and go towards God. Because I'm telling you, if you're sinning, you are not going towards God, okay? Christians can be sinners, actively sinning, um, and going away from God, okay? So what, what, what Christ's message is, repent, stop sinning, and go towards God, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand, okay? So what is the kingdom of heaven? Uh, the kingdom of heaven is, uh, it is a kingdom, okay? It is a, it, okay? Like an example, what is an example of a kingdom? Um, 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 I, I've used like uh, stores before, like let's say Walmart. Walmart, let's say the kingdom of Walmart, okay? In Walmart, the structure would be there's the, um, there's the owners of Walmart, then at, at, at the store, at the actual store location, there's the general manager of the store, assistant managers, department managers, um, uh, general labor employees, you know, and last but not least, the customers. And that's the general makeup of the kingdom of Walmart. There's a hierarchy of power there, and the system is in place. The purpose of Walmart is to generate money by selling uh, goods and services to the consumer. Okay, that is the kingdom of Walmart. Well, the kingdom of heaven is God is the uh, is the owner. Okay, Jesus is the general manager, if you will. Jesus runs the whole place. Jesus, you know what I mean. Um, and underneath Christ, you know, there are those uh, where his uh, uh, Christ, those that believe in Christ. And in the kingdom of heaven, we are establishing our position based on how obedient we are here on earth. So the believers in Jesus Christ are given a position in the kingdom of heaven according to how obedient they are in carrying out the words of Christ here on earth. All right. So the most the more obedient Christians here on earth right now will have more uh, uh, honorable, honorable positions in the kingdom of heaven that is to come. Now, the kingdom of heaven is being established right here and right now, and it's, so therefore it is at hand. Once we come to the point that, to the place that we accept Christ as being the none other than the son of the living God, okay, and we believe that he has died for our sins, taken away the sins of the entire world, and shed his blood and had his body broken uh, uh, for the sake of our sins. If we believe that with the trusted, committed belief, meaning that we're living our life um, 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 showing Christ that we're doing our best to be obedient to him due to the sacrifice of his life that he's given for us, if we do that with a trusted, committed belief, we are uh, allow entry or become a part of the kingdom of heaven, okay? That's what the kingdom of heaven is, all right? Uh, so, so Jesus tells his disciples to go out and, and preach uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, all right? Okay, so in chapter 10, verse number 8, Jesus tells his disciples to heal the sick. He's empowered them, remember? It said there in 10, 1, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease, okay? So he tells them in, in chapter 10, verse 8, he says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely I have given you this power, so freely uh, 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 exercise this power over uh, uh, you know, freely give these uh, free gifts to uh, the lost children of Israel, to the children of Israel, all right, to the Jews and that. Heal them, cleanse lepers. Don't do it for, for money. Don't do it for, for glory or praise. Don't do it for some kind of leverage purposes. No, freely Christ gave them the power to do these things, and Christ wants them to freely give uh, uh, these blessings to the people, okay? Alright, okay, okay, so if you ever see anybody trying to sell some kind of a spiritual gift, some kind of healing, 
oh, give me this donation and I'll, and I'll pray for your family. Or I'll pray healings and all this. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Christ freely gave uh, uh, people here on earth now, uh, uh, true believers are freely given the uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit of God to perform miracles. And they should be performing these things for free. It's not a business. It's not for capital gain. And it's not for their own glory. It's for the glory of God. All right, moving forward. Uh, verse 9. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor a bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs. Uh, for, for a worker is worthy of his food. So Jesus told them to go out and essentially don't bring nothing with them except what they got on. And he, what he's telling them is, uh, the Lord will provide for you everything that you're going to need along your journey. You don't need to bring any money. You don't need to worry about what you're going to eat, nothing. Just go. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and witness the power of God. See, God is such a good God. We take God and we put him in his box as if he's not capable of doing everything. He created everything. The air that we're breathing. The blood that's flowing through our veins. You know what I'm saying? All the food that we consume. Everything was already here. God is in ultimate control of every single last thing that happens. Everything is subject to the will of God. So when Jesus sends his disciples out, he's like, just go. Don't bring nothing with you. Don't worry about nothing. Look, God's going to provide everything that you need on your journey. Okay? All right. Verse 11. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. All right, let's start right there, okay? Okay? Jesus is saying, hey, I'm sending you out, and you're not going to bring me anything with you. Don't bring nothing with you. And in addition to that, you don't know where you're going to stay at. You're just going out, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and just, it's, it's like a leap of faith, if you will. Uh, to, to do the will of God, okay, 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 uh, the Holy Spirit of God, the, the, the Holy Spirit, we're empowered with, okay, Christians, true believers in Christ are empowered with the Holy Spirit of God, why, okay, okay, believers are empowered Filled with the Holy Spirit of God in order to do God's will, okay? A Christian is not filled with the Holy Spirit of God to go sit at home and twiddle their thumbs. They are filled with the Holy Spirit of God to go out and, and preach, to heal the sick, to, 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 act, to accurately do God's will. If a person wants to experience being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, it's best that they get in gear and get in the position where they're ready to start doing God's will. Okay? 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 So, uh, so, 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 yeah, Jesus sends them out and they don't know where they're going to go. But, but, but God, oh, God is working it out for them. There's, there's people that God's saying, okay, go and try to. Stay with the person who seems worthy, who seems like they're accepting the word of God and dwell there. And not only will you dwell there, but let, the, let your peace fall on that home. That's the, the peace of God. Okay? Okay? But if a person, uh, at the end of verse 13, but, but if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. So meaning if you go, they go to a place, they go to a home, they go to a city, and they bring the message that Christ given them, repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If the people reject them, you know what I'm saying? Let your peace return. Just leave. Okay, well, uh, thanks for listening. Take care type of deal. Don't even, you know, uh, uh, linger around. But if the person accepts the message, accepts, uh, acknowledges that they need to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand, then let your peace uh, stay there. Okay, and whoever, verse 14, whoever will not receive you nor hear your words when you, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Verse 15, Assuredly I say to you, it will be more tolerable 
for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than it will be for that city. Okay, so Sodom and Gomorrah, there are a bunch of uh, 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 gay people there, homosexual people having sex with the same races, okay? That's not, God did not design, not, not same races, with the same gender, you know what I'm saying? Two men having sexual intercourse, two women having sexual intercourse. God did not design the human beings to function in that way. It's supposed to be a man and a woman, okay? All right? So, in Saddam and Gomorrah, they were doing all kind of freaky stuff, you know, uh, uh, type of deal. And it came to pass where uh, the, the cries of people went up from Saddam and Gomorrah to, to, to God in heaven, and God sent two angels to Saddam and Gomorrah to, to look around and see if all of these things were true that the city had become so perverted, all right? And when the angels came to uh, Saddam and Gomorrah, the people tried to rape, the, the, the men tried to rape the angels, okay? They tried to, they tried, they tried to rape the angels, you know, the angels struck them at the city with blindness, you know what I'm saying? So, so they, they, they could stop them from raping them type of deal. It was tripped out. So, so the next morning they left and and God rained down fire and brimstone and destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know that that's 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 the first death, okay? When they died there, but on the day of judgment, it'll be it'll be a second death when uh when the, the sinners and unbelievers are cast into the lake of fire. You know what I'm saying? With Satan and the rest of the fallen demons and that, the rest of the fallen angels. Okay? So what God what Christ is saying here is in the day of judgment, it's going to be uh, Saddam and Gomorrah will have a better place in hell than the people that's rejecting the messengers that Christ is sending. Because Christ sent out his 12 disciples, right? So Christ is like, look, if a place rejects you, if a home rejects you, shake off the dust from your feet at that place. Because in the day of judgment, uh, when, 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 you know what I'm saying, the second death is about to come about. Uh, or, 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 or everlasting life, you know what I'm saying? The dust from their feet that they shook off, okay? That the disciples shook off against the homes that did not accept them, that did not want to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, that dust is going to rise up as a testimony against the people that rejected Christ's disciples, okay? And, uh, and they're going to have a lower position in hell than the people of Saddam and Gomorrah, okay? Okay, I hope I was clear on that, all right? Okay, so verse 16, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as ser serpents and as harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. Okay, so Christ says, Behold, I send you out a sheep. So a sheep has no defensive mechanisms, okay? Uh, if you walk up and punch a sheep, a sheep doesn't really have anything it's going to do besides, you know, go bad. It's like it doesn't have sharp teeth to bite you with or strong legs to kick you with or they're more or less helpless, you know what I'm saying? So Christ is like, look, I'm sending you out a sheep. I'm sending you out uh, uh, helpless under your own power, you know what I'm saying? So so be wise. Don't don't be foolish and, and don't put yourselves in uh, uh, situations where you know you'll be, um, uh, you know, in, in direct harm's way. You know, he's, he's saying be strategic in how you're doing this thing. Um, because he's sending us out sheep in the midst of wolves. Who are the wolves? The wolves are men. Men are corrupt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, in, in the book of Proverbs, it says, uh, A man that's not in control of his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. That means if a man's not in control of his own spirit, unclean spirits can come and go in that man as he pleases. You know? If a man is subject to all kind of unclean spirits and demonic uh, possession, that man is like a wolf. Uh, uh, when, when is like a wolf towards uh, somebody that's actually doing God's will. Oh man, uh, 
the, the kingdom of darkness and devil and the fallen angels and demons and all of that, they don't like that. They don't like somebody trying to do God's will. You know what I'm saying? They're like wolves to, to try to attack or derail, you know what I'm saying? Or uh, 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 resist the will of God from happening. All right? All right? Okay. Okay. But it says, be wise as serpents, but it's harmless as doves. You know what I'm saying? We're not to uh, afflict any kind of harm on these people that are lost and deceived or that may be possessed of that. You know what I'm saying? Jesus is like, be harmless. Don't cause these people, don't cause these people harm. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, 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 we're supposed to be operating in love as, 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 as followers of Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be like Christ and Christ operated in love. He didn't operate in hate or harm or pain and suffering. He operated everything was out of love. Okay? Type of deal. Alright. 17. But beware of men for they, they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in the synagogues. Scourge means to like whip basically to to whoop as a form of to whip as a form of punishment. Okay, all right. Uh, the synagogues, I guess that's like the courts, if you will. All right. Verse eighteen. You will be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. Um, so that's that's essentially saying you. When you're standing before kings and governors and and, and and important people, you know what I'm saying, and and non-Jews, you know what I'm saying, then it's as a you're 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 a testimony to them because when you're brought before them, you're going to give them the gospel that I'm giving you, okay? Type of deal. But when they deliver you up, verse 19, do not worry about how you how you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. Verse 20. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Okay. I was just talking a second ago about a, uh, a, a, uh, how the book of Proverbs says, A man that's not in control of his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. And essentially that means he can be possessed by any unclean spirit that chooses to. Okay. Now, now, now. As a believer in Jesus Christ being washed clean in his blood, we can be possessed by the Holy Spirit of God, meaning that, that God can take over us and, and, and use our body to do his will. Check it out. It says it's right here. But when, when they deliver you up, don't worry about uh, what you should speak. He's saying, don't be sitting there in your jail cell thinking about uh, what am I going to tell these judges? What am I going to tell these people that's persecuted? He said, be cool, because it will be given to you in that hour what you what you should speak. What do you mean it will be given to me in that hour what I should speak? For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father uh, who speaks in you, okay? God will speak through us. He will take, take power of our mouth and, and, and speak. It's not our consciousness, but the consciousness of God. You know what I'm saying? That's powerful. I want to be uh, possessed by God, by His Holy Spirit. I want to, to, to I, I want to, I, want, I, I like to do that more often than not. Use me, Father. You know, type of deal. Beats being possessed by unclean spirits. That's for sure. You know, Satan came to, to what? To kill, to steal, and destroy. But Christ came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. Now, what you think? If God gonna sit up here and use your body, you know what I'm saying, to do as well, if he's going to possess you, uh, I think he might build you up. I think he might fortify you. He might work on those uh, weaknesses that you have that, that, that you need to take care of. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes folk be going through things and it be like a rebuilding process because God wants to use you. Okay, if God wants to use you, it's certain things that you got to let go of. It's certain lifestyles that you can't be living. So if you're going through something and God's removing these things out of your life, sometimes it can be painful. But just hold on because once you get through that process and you're to the point where God can use you now, I mean, man, look, you look around and you'll be in like some godly situations type of deal. 
You might be driving a nice car. You might have a nice home, might have some nice clothes and things of that. But that's materialistic things like that. The more important thing is you will begin to develop the mind of Christ. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's powerful. I, I, want, I want more of that, okay? By all means. All right. Let's move forward here. Okay, 21. Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. What is this saying here? Okay. My interpretation of what this is saying is, so Christ is always preaching about the kingdom of heaven and, and talking about the day of judgment and things of this nature, okay? Whereas Christ will sit on his throne and, and judge the evil according to their deeds, judge the wicked according to their deeds and that, okay? 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 So, let's say within a household, let's say the gospel was given to a household, Let's say a household has a mother, a father, and two children, a boy and a girl, okay? So, the gospel was given to this household. Let's say dad rejected the gospel. Let's say mom accepted the gospel. Let's say uh, uh, son accepted the gospel. Let's say daughter didn't accept the gospel. Okay, so, in the day of judgment, uh, uh, in the day of judgment, uh, Christ will be like, okay, the gospel was brought to this home. Okay, so, 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 dad didn't accept it and daughter didn't accept it. So the mother and father, I mean the mother and the son of that household will have to rise up and give a testimony against the mother and, I mean, the, 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 the mother and the, and, the, and, the, and the son who accepted the gospel in that household will rise up and give a testimony against that father and that daughter that didn't accept the gospel. It might be that the, 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 uh, the gospel was brought to the household by a member of the household. Okay? 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 For example, take a household, the same household. Mother, father, son, daughter. Okay? It, it might be the son that hears the gospel and receives the gospel somewhere else and believes it and brings the gospel to the household, to mom, dad, and his sister, okay? And at that point in time, they'll determine whether they want to accept that gospel or reject the gospel based on, you know, how the son, well, you know, uh, when the son brought it to him, all right? And in the day of judgment, that son will have to rise up against those people in his household who rejected the gospel, and he'll have to give his account. I gave them the gospel to the best of my ability, and they didn't accept, not only did they not accept it, but they, you know, they they discouraged me from continuing in it. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's my rationale with verses uh, 21 through uh, 22. I'll read it again. Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. We're not talking about death, dying, the, the first death where, you know, we die here on this earth. We're talking about the second death when, 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 when a person is condemned to hell and thrown into the lake of fire, okay? That's the second death, all right? Let me read this again. Now, brother will deliver a brother to death and the father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. All right? Okay, let's move forward. 23. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For surely I say to you, uh, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. I think Jesus is telling his disciples, like, uh, before you get through the cities of Israel, I'm going to catch back up with you. You know what I'm saying? Type of deal. Okay, moving forward. A disciple was not above, at verse 24, 10-24, a disciple was not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. Okay, okay? Christ is the master. 
Christ is, they call Christ rabbi, teacher. You know what I'm saying? He's like the head teacher. He's our, Christ is our master here. We can't be better than Christ. Christ is the example that we're striving towards. You know what I'm saying? He was the only perfect man type of deal. Okay? All right. Disciple is not above his teacher nor servant above his master. It is enough that a disciple be like his teacher and that a servant be like his master. Let's try to be like Christ. But but if the, he says, uh, if they call the master of the house Beelzebub, which is like a leader of the demons or something like that, how much more will they call those of his household? So if, And they, they were trying to call Jesus uh, Beelzebub or, or devil worshiper or whatever. He's like, they, they were saying that Jesus cast out demons in the name of demons type of deal. So Jesus is like, man, if they calling me a devil worshiper, how much more are they going to call you? You know what I'm saying? Devil worshiper. That, that crisis, you know what I'm saying? God in the flesh. You know what I'm talking about? So his disciples, us, you and I, you know, they, they don't do uh, even worse. Okay? So Jesus said in 26, Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and, and hidden that will not be known. Jesus saying, look, don't sweat it. Don't worry about it when people are, are, are cursing your name and, and lying on you and accusing you of being, you know, devil worshipers and, you know what I'm saying, sorcerers and things like this. He's like, don't trip. Don't worry about it because all of their deeds that they're doing and all of the wrong that they're, all the persecutions that they're doing to my people, everything is, they're going to be held accountable for everything. Not one thing will remain hidden that these people did against you type of deal, okay? Okay, verse 27, whatever our, Jesus, Jesus is still talking, this is all Jesus talking here, from verses, uh, from the middle of verse 5 all the way down to the end of the chapter 10, this is all Jesus talking, by the way, alright, okay, verse 27, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. So Jesus is giving them private, man, these are the best ministerial classes a person could have ever received. You know, we got all of these uh, these, these schools that teach people how to preach and how to teach and, and how to be pastors or ministers and, and things of this that. Well, they getting it, they, man, they getting it in the raw right here. So Jesus is like, look, all this stuff that I'm telling you, all these teachings that I'm teaching you and things like this, I'm telling you here and... and, and, and and uh, uh, almost secret, if you will, but you take it and you speak it on the loudspeaker. You speak it so everybody can hear it. You know, that's why I'm doing it right here on the video thing. I'm going to put it on the YouTube and try to tell it to the whole world type of deal. That's what Christ is telling them to do. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him that who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Okay, remember I was just talking about, you know, brother delivering brother and mother delivering father, wife delivering husband to death. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about the second death here. You know what I'm saying? Verse 28. And do not fear those who, ki who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Jesus is like, man, if a person can kill you here on this earth and you know your soul good, if your soul is in my hand, essentially you good. Don't even worry about it. You know what I'm saying? The second death is what we're trying to avoid. Right? He says, uh, do not fear those who can kill the body but can't kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You know what I'm saying? That's Christ. That's Christ. You know what I'm saying? Christ can 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 destroy your soul in hell, cast you down to hell. You know what I'm saying? Second death. We don't want to go there. I know I don't. Alright. Verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? Jesus saying, "Look, man, you got these these birds flying around. Excuse me, flying around every which and way in that, and and they're not worth much. They're easy to catch, and they're sold for 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 for, for change. You know what I'm saying? But not one of these birds are going to die or fall from the sky and hit the ground without." God being notified or God's permission for that to happen. Not one bird will perish without God's permission type of deal. Uh, God is in massive control of all of that. All right. All right. Verse 30. Uh, uh, 
but the very hairs of your head are, are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, for you are of more value than many sparrows. If, if, if a sparrow don't die without God's will, without, you know what I'm saying? If a sparrow doesn't die outside of God's will, the Christ is like, look, you know what I'm saying? Every single last hair on your head, you know what I'm saying? God has, God, God takes account of, you know what I'm saying? God got you, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're worried about, you're, you're, you're worried about how some, don't worry about how somebody's going to treat you or how you're going to make it out of this situation or that, or that. God, you don't, you don't understand how important you are to God. This is what Christ is saying. He's saying you're so important to God, you don't understand that God is, is looking and, and taking account of things about you that you're not even aware of. Even every hair, every piece of hair that's on your head, uh, God has an account of. You know what I'm saying? When you combed your hair this morning the last time and a couple of those strands of hair fell off, God has an accounting of that type of deal. So how much more are you going to be safe? You know what I'm saying? How much more are you going to have everything that you need? Food, clothing, shelter, these type of things, the words to say. You know what I'm saying? God got you. Essentially, that's what Jesus is saying. Okay, okay, okay. So he's like, fear God. Don't fear these men who, who, who think they can hurt you because, you know what I'm saying? A person can't hurt you outside the will of God. You know what I'm saying? If God say, uh, wants you to go somewhere and it's God's will that nobody touch you or nobody cause you harm, you best believe nobody going to touch you or nobody going to cause you harm. God got the final say so on everything. You know what I'm saying? If a person really wants to uh, oppose God's will, like God can God can require a person's life of them just like that. You know what I'm saying? Let me get that breath up out your lungs type of deal. You know what I'm saying? That's who we should be fearing. We shouldn't be fearing somebody walk, running around here operating in, in, in the earth that God made. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like what kind of, that's, they don't have no power. The only power that they have is a power that came from God that he allowed them to, uh, to have an experience for this short time. You know what I'm saying? So you telling me that this person is going to use this little power that God gave them to oppose God? You know what I'm saying? It's nobody to fear. You know what I'm saying? Let me get that life about you. You know what I'm saying? It can happen just like that. That's who we should be fearing. God. All right. Verse 32. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my fa Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Christ is like, look, Represent me, you know what I'm saying? Don't be, don't be scared. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, 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 uh. Cause when you represent me here on the face of this earth, I'm gonna represent you in heaven. This earth passes away. You know what I'm saying? Heavenly things, they, they remain. Type of deal. Uh, um, you know what I'm saying? So Christ is like, yeah, confess me. You know what I'm saying? Don't deny me. Type of deal. All right. So moving forward. Verse 34. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, daughter against her mother, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law, and a, at 36, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Okay, that, that's, uh, that's, that's like the same, same thing I was just saying here about, you know what I'm saying, the second death. And you know, that type of deal. Okay? 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 Because everybody's not going to accept Christ. You know what I'm saying? There's something in heaven called the Lamb's Book of Life. If you feel me? So if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, then you know, you're going to confess Christ and you're going to have a spot, in, a, pl a place in heaven. Christ has prepared a place uh, in heaven for us. Okay? But everybody's name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So when we go about preaching the gospel and that, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's not going to accept the message of the gospel. If you have 10 friends, go ask your 10 friends if they believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for our sins. Chances are some of those friends don't believe it. You know what I'm saying? And that brings about division. That brings about uh, uh, issues and within, within the friendship. You know what I'm saying? That divides the group of friends from the believers and the unbelievers. The believers in that group of friends 
should be uh, closer with each other than they are with the unbelievers. Now the believers, it's their job to try to give the gospel to the unbelievers so that they all can be believers, so all the friends can go and be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But somebody's going to reject that gospel. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's not going to want a part of it. And that brings about division. You know what I'm saying? That brings about strife. You know what I'm saying? The sword. And that's what Christ, Christ didn't come to bring peace. He didn't come so these friends could be friends forever. He came to call his sheep to him. Christ is uh, about building the kingdom of heaven. God is excessively committed to uh, establishing the kingdom of heaven. Okay, that's that's what that's what everything's all about. We are building this is kingdom of heaven tryouts, if you will. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 everybody having peace with each other is not is not is 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 not the kingdom of heaven. You know what I'm saying? Not not here on this earth. Why should a person that's living their life according to the will of God, be at complete peace with somebody operating with, uh, uh, on, this, on the same spectrum as the kingdom of darkness. There should be division there. You know what I'm saying? Yes, there should be. Because one's going to be eternally condemned to hell, and one's going to be eternally condemned to heaven. You know what I'm saying? The one going to heaven wants the sinner to go to heaven. The one going to hell wants the, uh, the, 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 the righteous person to go to hell. It's like, it's like you know, uh, division. Sword. Okay, moving forward. Hmm. 37. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Okay, what is this saying? Christ came on this earth. He came down from heaven. Everything that was made was made through Christ. Anything that was made was not made outside of Christ. Angels, uh, uh, humans, you know what I'm saying, the earth, everything, heaven, everything that was made, Christ had his hand in making that thing, right? Okay, so this, this Christ, the same Christ that made everything, took on human flesh, right, and lived a perfect life, and, and, and was falsely accused, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and crucified, you know what I'm saying, he did this on purpose so that his blood can be shed for our sins. If you, if you... Love your father or mother or daughter or son or husband or wife more than what Christ did for you. That's, 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 you're not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. What are you saying? What I'm saying is if, if, if there's a husband and a husband has a wife and the wife does not accept the gospel, okay? And, and the wife doesn't want the husband to accept the gospel. If the husband chooses the wife over the gospel, then he's not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, you understand? Okay, if there's a, a parent-child relationship, if the parent loves their child so much that 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 they will disregard the gospel and what Jesus did for them for the sake of their child, then that parent is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. You see what I'm saying? How can a person? How can how can a parent disregard it? Uh, how, uh, how can a parent? take a child over the kingdom of heaven. Let me give you an example. Let's say it's like a mixed family, right? Let's say there's a woman and then there's a child, okay? And let's say this this is a single parent situation where dad isn't really around anymore type of deal, okay? And let's say that there's a husband, uh, a guy that come and marries this woman, you know what I'm saying? So he's like stepdad and he's husband to the wife, he's stepdad to the child, okay? And let's say dad wants the whole family to to be re, to to receive the gospel and to be active in the church and that, and 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 the mom has a different plan for daughter. Maybe the mom wants daughter to be involved in some extracurricular activities, some some sport or something like this, and 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 and, and rejects the dad uh, 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 for for be, for for the sake of the child. You know what I'm saying? She's like, okay, I'd rather have this child be involved in these things rather than, than, than to be involved within the gospel type of deal. Okay, okay. So you're telling me the child and, and it's fun and games and that is more important than the gospel? It's like, no, like the gospel has to come first. It, the gospel has to take priority of everything. It's supposed to be the foundation of our life. Excuse me if that was a weak example. What I'm trying to say is, the gospel should be the found. 
Everything should be built upon that. When they're building a house or a building or whatever, they, they pull up the dirt or whatever, and they, they lay the foundation, and then they build everything on top of it. The gospel is supposed to be the foundation. Parenting isn't supposed to be the foundation in your life. You know what I'm saying? Your career, it isn't supposed to be the foundation in your life. Uh, good health, it's not supposed to be the foundation. Christ is supposed to be the foundation. The gospel, okay? Move forward. <clears throat> Calm down, young a little bit. Hmm. All right, 38. And, who, and he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. What is the cross? What is the cross? What do you mean he and he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me? A cross is the burden that, that you have to bear in keeping the gospel. Okay, okay. Prior to me walking and actively exercising the Word of God in my life, I was an active sinner. You know what I'm saying? I still sin sometimes as I'm not perfect, but in my if, if I can, I try my best to not operate in sin. Things slip up and happen where, where, where I sin, and I, you know, I do my best to repent and turn from it. We all have our weak points, okay? But once you come to the point where you're having a trusted, committed belief, that Jesus Christ is none other than the Son of God, and you're trying to live your life according to His teachings, okay, it's a burden that you have to carry because the sin that you used to sin is still there waiting for you, and it's getting stronger, and it's awfully tempting, but you have to carry the burden of the gospel and stay away from that thing and, and, and do the will of God. Sometimes it is not that desirable. Sometimes it's not very pleasant. Sometimes it can put you in uncomfortable situations that you wouldn't have been in otherwise. But this is the this is the this is this is this is what we have to do as believers. We have to pick up that burden, then pick up that cross and carry it. Okay? Okay? And he who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Alright, 39. And he who finds his life will lose it. <clears throat> and he who loses his life for my sake shall find it. Meaning if you want to hold on to the fun and the pleasures and, and, the, and, the, and the sins and all of these things that the world has to offer you, if you want to hold on to that, then, 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 then you will lose the life, that, the, the life, the more abundant life that Christ had prepared for you, you know what I'm saying, even, even eternal life, okay, okay, but if you were to lay down the life that this world has to offer you, sin and destruction, you know what I'm saying? If you were to lay down that quote unquote life is not life, it's really death. You know what I'm saying? But if you were to lay down this, this life that this world has to offer you and hold on to what Christ has to give you, which is abundant life and, and, and eternal life, then, then, then that's when you actually gain life. Okay? 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 He who finds his life will lose, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. There it is. Okay. 40. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. I, I, I like this, okay? Look, Jesus is saying, okay, my name's Richard, right? Jesus is saying, okay, Richard, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 Jesus is saying, okay, I'm Jesus, I, I am the word of God, and I'm giving you the word of God, Richard, okay, Richard? So when you take that word of God and you, and you give it to somebody else, if they accept you, because you're presenting my word, if they accept you, they're, they're accepting me. So Jesus is saying, if I'm operating in the will of God, you know what I'm saying, and, and someone accepts me, they're accepting him. You know what I'm saying? I can be the conduit by which God comes to a person. Wow, that's powerful. Whoa, you thought, I, know, I know you didn't think you were that important, right? You know what I'm saying? Neither did I. But Christ is saying, hey, look, you know what I'm saying? If they accept you, they accepted me. Look, he said, what? Well, he who receives you, receives me. And who, he who receives me, receives him who sent me. So it goes even farther. So if a person will receive me, they going to receive God. You know, so, wow, you know what I'm saying? You're talking about power responsibility. You're talking about an a, a honorable position. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, okay. So if a person receives me and I'm accurately... Uh, 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 operating within the will of God, they receive Christ. If a person receives Christ, they receive God Almighty. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? And that goes for any disciple. That goes for any person who is 
uh, uh, has a trusted, committed belief in, in, in Jesus Christ. And it's, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it goes for all of them. All right. All right, it goes on 41. He who receives a prophet, okay, forgive me, I'm using me in this example because, in all of these examples, because it helps me understand it, okay? I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus Christ is, Jesus Christ is Lord of my life, okay? Okay? And this is what this, this stuff is applying to people who, his disciples were Jesus is Lord over their life, okay? All right, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ, okay? He received, uh, 41, he who receives a prophet, that's me, I'm a prophet, I'm, I'm, I will prophesy according to the scripture, according to the will of God, okay? He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, he who receives me in the name of Jesus Christ shall receive a prophet's reward, you know what I'm saying? Christ is sitting on his throne right now, you know what I'm saying? Christ, Christ said he will allow us to sit on his throne with him. You know what I'm saying? In the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Type of deal. So, 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 so if a person will receive me, they receiving all the all the stuff that Christ got. Rewards. Big reward. Alright. So he receives a prophet. Me in the name of prophet. Jesus shall re receive a prophet reward. Jesus reward. Alright. He who receives a righteous man, me. Okay, Richard, how are you righteous? I'm righteous because I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I accept the, everything that he did for me, the free gift that he given me that I didn't deserve. That's the only righteousness I have. Outside of that, I'm not righteous. Outside of that, I'm a dead man. I'm dead in sin outside of that. You know what I'm saying? All of the good things that I think I did is filthy rags to God. You feel me? The only righteousness I have is the righteousness that I have than being covered by the blood of Christ, that I don't have to be condemned to the second death because of my sin. You know what I'm saying? Christ did that for me, type of deal. Okay, okay. So he who receives a righteous man, me, in the name of a righteous man, Jesus, shall receive a righteous man reward. Jesus reward. You know what I'm saying? You want Jesus reward? Okay, receive what I'm telling you then. You know what I'm saying? You got Jesus reward. We got his reward. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. All right, 42. And whoever gives one of these little ones a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, Assuredly, I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Okay, so what is it saying? Okay, okay, I like this. I had to put some thought to this one. So, Jesus gives me his word, right? Because Jesus is my Lord. You know what I'm saying? He gives me all of these teachings. I receive his word and I, am, I receive it with a trusted, committed belief. I'm his disciple, right? I'm a disciple of Christ, right? So, I'm a disciple. And, and, and I bring the word of God to you, okay? I bring the word of God to you, right? If you accept the word of God, and not only do you accept the word of God, but you go as far as to give the word of God to somebody else, oh my goodness, you, you will by no means lose your reward. You know what I'm saying? That's what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying, I'm giving you my disciple uh, my word. If you give the word to somebody else, you know what I'm saying? And they get a word to somebody else, they not going to lose their reward. Type of deal. Alright? Anyone who gives one of these little ones a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, surely I say to you, he should by no means lose his reward. Okay, that's, that's, that's what it Alright. That concludes Matthew chapter 10. Alright? Um, next message will be going into Matthew 11. Uh, Mo Jesus, Mo Jesus teaching, Mo Jesus, Mo Jesus. We need all that we can get, right? Amen. Hey, look, thank you guys for listening. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. It's been fun doing it. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot. God bless you. Take care.